Yesterday was Palm Sunday, the first day of Holy Week 2011. The Catholics, liturgically speaking, Holy Week is the most important week of the calendar year. It's a week that we want to do everything correctly. And to do everything correctly, we don't have to reinvent the wheel. To do everything correctly, all we have to do is incorporate into this week a number of things that Mary herself did during her lifetime. At the Last Supper, Jesus instituted the Holy Eucharist. During the Paschal meal, Jesus stood up, picked up some bread, gave praise and thanks to God, blessed that bread, giving it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, for this is my body. And with that proclamation, the Word made flesh. Now is also the word made bread. Later on in that same Paschal meal, Jesus once again stood up, this time picking up a chalice filled with wine. Once again, he gave praise and thanks to God. He blessed that wine and handed that chalice to his disciples saying, Take and drink, for this is my blood that will be shed for you. And with that proclamation, the Word made flesh was now also the Word made wine. Very interestingly, in his Gospel, St. John did not describe the institution of the Eucharist in terms of the consecration of bread and wine. Rather, he described the institution of the Eucharist in terms of service, in terms of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. Listen to how St. John describes that in his Gospel. The devil had already induced Judas son of Simon the Iscariot, to hand Jesus over. So during supper, fully aware that the Father had put everything into his power, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, Jesus rose from supper and took off his outer garments. He took a towel and tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel around his waist. And when he had finished washing their feet, Jesus put his garments back on and reclined at table again. So in describing the institution of the Eucharist, St. John did it in terms of service, in terms of Jesus washing the feet of his disciples. At the Annunciation, when God invited Mary to be the mother of his son, and Mary responded to that invitation with, yes, let it be done unto me according to your word. With that yes, the Son of God became flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary. And very interestingly, after this event, the first thing that Mary did was to travel to see her cousin Elizabeth. And she went there to wash her feet. That is to say, she went there to serve her in a time of need. On this Thursday, Holy Thursday, 
When the Eucharist is presented to us with the invocations, body of Christ, the blood of Christ. And our response to these invocations is the same. Amen. That amen is comparable to Mary's yes of the Annunciation. Because when we receive that Eucharist, the Son of God is really present within us as the Son of God was really present in the Virgin Mary at the Annunciation event. So if we want to make Holy Thursday very meaningful, I suggest we attend the Mass of the Lord's Supper. Receive that Eucharist worthily. And then look for the opportunity to wash somebody's feet. That is to say, to look for the opportunity to serve somebody who is in need. The following day, Good Friday, that's the day Jesus took upon himself the cross and trudged all the way up to the top of Mount Calvary. And having arrived there, he was nailed to that cross and raised up until he expired. Even though most of Jesus' associates abandoned him on the day he needed them the most, Jesus did not have to make that journey by himself. Did not have to make the journey by himself because Mary, his mother, accompanied him all every step of the way. She was there as he was trudging up with that cross on his back to give him the support that he needed. On top of that hill, when he's being nailed to the cross, she heard the bang and bang and bang of iron against iron as they drove the nails into his hands and feet, simultaneously driving a sword right through her heart. And she was at the foot of the cross when her son expired. As painful and as difficult as it was, Mary did not allow her son to make that journey by himself. She was with him and supported him every step of the way. There's a cue there that we can make Good Friday ourselves very meaningful by attending the Good Friday services, by listening intently to the passion that we proclaimed that day to respond enthusiastically to the invocations, to venerate the cross, and once again to receive the Eucharist worthily. And then to add a depth to the meaningfulness of this day, then to walk with Jesus with somebody who was hurting. Visit a homebound. Visit a nursing home to somebody who's there longing to talk to somebody. Make arrangements to be at a soup kitchen. Be a food to the hungry and to the poor. Spend some time patiently listening to a teenager who's confused about where he or she is in life at this time. Give support and encouragement to somebody in a recovery program, whether it's from drugs or alcohol whether it's from gambling or pornography. Give some encouragement to somebody who feels they can never be forgiven for something they did when they're involved in an abortion. Pray that we walk with Jesus with somebody who's hurting, giving that person support, just as Mary walked with her son on that first Good Friday. Then we have Holy Saturday, a day of patient waiting. About 15 years ago, I participated in an Ignatian retreat, 30 days of retreat. The final episode of that retreat deals with Jesus' suffering and death and resurrection. We're at the point of meditating upon the Lord dying on the cross, being taken down and put into his arms of his mother. 
And having been presented with that meditation, my spiritual director said, reflect upon this, and when you are ready tomorrow, come and see me. When I'm ready, I responded. Every day of our retreat, I've been scheduled to be with you at 9 o'clock in the morning. Not tomorrow, she said. Come to me when you are ready. How will I know when I'm ready, I asked. You'll know, she responded. Come to me then. Well, that morning started reflecting upon Jesus dying on the cross, very carefully and gently being taken down from the cross and lovingly putting that lifeless body into the arms of his loving mother. Kept on reflecting and saying, what am I looking for? I don't know what I'm looking for. How can I be ready? By noon time, I wasn't ready. Early afternoon, doing that meditation over and over again. Nothing was happening, becoming frustrated. If I was on a train, not knowing what stop I should get off at, I didn't know what I was looking for. So after supper, I was outside walking in an area. In my own mind, walking with Mary, and I turned to her and I said, what was the first Saturday, first Holy Saturday, what was your experience? And the answer came floating through my mind. I experienced, she said, the same thing you're experiencing. Grief, frustration, uncertainty. But I did not know that my son was going to rise from the dead, as you know. That was an hallelujah experience in my life. Side by side, experience what it is without being Jesus being raised from the dead. Frustrating, grief-stricken, uncertain, and suddenly realizing that he did rise from the dead. What an hallelujah moment that was. A deep realization of the meaning of resurrection in our lives. It was like Mary Magdalene hearing the, the gardener say Mary and seeing Jesus, the risen Lord, for the first time. It was like those two disciples on the way to Emmaus who recognized the risen Lord in the breaking of the bread. To make Holy Saturday meaningful as well as Easter Sunday, I suggest we take a period of time during that day, as busy it might be getting ready for Easter Sunday itself, and just to go through our mind what life would be like if there was no resurrection. It would be like Jimmy Stewart and It's a Wonderful Life. To look at what life would have been like if he was never born. What would life be like if there was no resurrection? And then on Easter, put side by side what life is like because Jesus Christ did rise from the dead as he said he would. Hopefully it'll be an hallelujah moment for all of us. We see the contrast between Jesus not rising from the dead and Jesus rising from the dead. Maybe that'll be a Mary Magdalene experience for us, that we recognize maybe deeply for the first time emotionally what resurrection means, or how excited those disciples were in Emmaus when they recognized that Jesus really did rise from the dead. This we're looking at the risen Christ. There's a story about two ladies who were walking home after attending a retreat during Holy Week. What a wonderful experience they had. They were sharing that experience with one another. How beautiful the music was. The atmosphere, the environment was just tastefully done. The preaching was outstanding. What a wonderful experience, they said. As they were sharing this walking along, they passed a beggar on the road. And deep down, they knew they should stop and help him. But they failed to do that. And once they failed to help that poor beggar, they no longer felt comfortable talking about their wonderful experience during their Holy Week retreat. So today as we move on with our novena, 
Pray we take full advantage of this wonderful week, Holy Week, that we pray when we should pray and we should react when we should react, that we experience a deep in our heart what the resurrection means, but pray more that we live the implications of that resurrection in such a way that we never feel reluctant to share our spiritual experience of the resurrection with others. May God be praised.